So, Black Orpheus is the standard of the month on my YouTube channel and Patreon page. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you the chords, run through the harmony, as well as address the following problem points that I think jazz guitarists often encounter with this standard. The first being, how do I comp this? What rhythm should I play? I'll show you three ways from beginner to something more interesting. This song feels like a song where you could just use A minor pentatonic over the whole form. Not quite, unfortunately. The descending chords here, D minor, D, D minor slash C, A minor, A minor slash G, often cause people problems to comp those and stay in time. Could we do something different here? And the final problem I'll look at today is not getting lost in the form. I think this is a really easy one to lose your place in. Now, before we get onto the lesson, please check the description for a link to the resources from today, as well as a link to my Patreon page. So let's address the chords and harmony first. This song is in AB form and it's 32 bars in length. There's a coda, which is often played as a coda at the end, but sometimes people like to use it as an introduction also. So we're in the key of A minor, the chords we get in the key of A minor when we harmonize an A minor scale are the following. Chord one, A minor seven. Chord two, B minor seven flat five. Chord three, C major seven. Chord four, D minor seven. Chord five, E seven. Now, theoretically it should be E minor seven, but in practice, chord five is E dominant seventh. Chord six, F major seven. And finally, chord seven, G seven. Now those are our diatonic in key chords for this song. So put the chart up and bing, 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 we have those chords everywhere. That leaves us with the following out of key chords. C sharp diminished, E minor seven flat five, and A seven flat nine. Now, if I was looking at a chart for the first time, I'm on the hunt for musical structures that I'm familiar with, chiefly being two five ones, major and minor two five ones. And this one, there's loads of these. There's plenty of examples of the minor two five one, B minor seven flat five, E seven to A minor. We've got D minor G C, which is a two five one from the relative major from C major. And we have another minor two five here in the second half of the form. E minor seven flat five, A seven D minor is a minor two five one in D minor. Well, let me play through it and talk through the harmony. The chord shapes, the chart is all available. Check the description for that. Now the A section is 16 bars in length. And one interesting thing that happens in this A section is it moves between a minor feel and a, a major feel. And it does this by utilizing the relative major. So every minor key has a relative major key. Every major key has a relative minor. So the relatives of each other in minor and major, in this case is A minor and C major. And really what we're doing is starting out on chord one in A minor, then we have the two B minor seven flat five to E seven. We'll do that twice. Then on the second line, gonna move to the major one and then a two five one in C major and then this C sharp diminish you can hear is taking us somewhere now a C sharp diminished is really really closely related to a dominant chord to an A7 flat 9 this contains C sharp E G and B flat A7 flat 9 contains those notes plus an A now what does C sharp diminished in A7 flat 9 or A7 like to do? It likes to go to D, D major, D minor. And D minor is one of the chords in this key um, and in C major and it's going to lead us perfectly there. And then what we're setting up here is we've really moved, staying with that, well going to the major feel here, look, D minor to 5, G7 to C6 and 9 I'm using here so we don't clash with the melody, and then to chord 4. So that's all like a, a line there where we're just moving to temporarily to C major. That was called two, five, one, and four of C major. So just, you know, with, we started out in A minor and then had a change in feel. If you listen, minor. Slight change here to the C. to the minor feel, back to B minor seven flat five, the two, E seven flat nine, the five, one, A minor, and the two and the five again, to set us up for the next B section. So that's how I like to think of it. So it's, it's really flip-flopping between A minor and C major, between those two relative sort of key centers, if you like. 
onto the B section, the first line's the same as the first line of um, the A section, so it's A minor chord 1, 2 and 5, B minor A7, and then the big change is here, so this is really, you're going to another key very temporarily here, we're going E minor 7 flat 5, and I like to play A7 with a sharp 5 and flat 9 to a D minor. Now, in the same way, B, E, A is a minor 2, 5, 1 in the key of A minor. E, A, D, E minor 7 flat 5, A7, D minor, is a minor 2, 5, 1 from the key of D minor. So this whole line really is a temporary move to D minor, if you like. And that's important if you want to solo over this bit, because it's moving away from the A minor feel. Uh, so 2, 5, 1 in D minor here. Then we get this rundown, D minor, C in the bass, that's the seventh in the bass, and then we get the two, five of A minor, A minor, A minor with the seventh in the bass, and then we move to F major seven, which in A minor would be chord six, and then we go to the two, to the five, to resolve to the one in the penultima bar, and then the two five at the end, so we can go again. So I think the interesting points in this song, in the A section it's that move to C major, uh, in the B section it's that move to D minor, but those are those are the, the harmony and said the chord shapes are charts available from my website, just check the description. Let me play it through for you, one, two, three, four. if you were playing the last line you would skip the final bar play another bar of A minor and then go D minor A minor twice and then D minor E minor 7 finishing on an A minor so it's going like 4 1 4 1 4 5 although it's a minor 7 to 1. Now onto the problems that jazz guitar players offer encounter with this song. Firstly rhythm what rhythm should I play? What bossa style should I do? How should I do that? Here's three options for you. So here's three options getting progressively harder that you could comp this with. Say, starting off we're playing finger style, thumbs playing the root note that I'm using index middle ring to play the other strings. And this is the first one. We're going one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. So hitting on one, the root note, two, three and four. So the roots on one and three. One, two, three and four. Four, we're just letting the chord ring out. The whole example. That would be the first way you could do it. Option two does something that's really common in this kind of bossa style, which is to anticipate the next chord half a beat early. It gives a feeling of moving forward nicely. So what we're going to do is on the and of four, we're going to play the chord from the next bar. Listen, and we're going to cut off the, the last hit of the chord before we do that as well, like this. One, two, three, and four, and. One, two, three, and four, and. So on the and of four, I'm hitting the B minor seven flat five. So it's coming in half a beat early. One, two, three, and four, and 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 one. And you'd want to take those two examples, get a feel for that groove, understand how to count it, what's happening where, 
and then I think once you are able to stop kind of thinking about it that rhythm will just happen like that second one My third option, a slightly different and more advanced one, is inspired by the rhythm of the clave. Um, this is uh, actually done with a, I like to do this with a bit of palm muting and we've got a few additional chords in here, but just have a listen to this. Kind of a bit more intriguing, a bit, I don't know, spooky maybe. Um, if you want to learn that one, I've got a full comping study available on the second tier of my Patreon page. On to the second problem or issue I think people have when playing a song. When it comes to soloing, I think a lot of people gravitate towards the minor pentatonic and whilst it works over quite a few of the chords, it's not really rich rich enough harmonically to, to do yourself any justice over those changes. It could trip you up on the out of key chords and the chord E7 is problematic. A minor pentatonic contains the following notes. A, C, D, E and G. And E7, the five chord in this key, is so important, but it, we haven't got the major third of that chord in the A minor pentatonic. And E7 is E, G sharp, B and D. So a better scale to use if you want to try and have a scale which fits most of the song would be the A harmonic minor, which would be A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp, A. That contains that G sharp, which is going to be useful for E7. And earlier I picked up those out of key chords, particularly the E minor 7 flat 5 A7 D minor. That's really a minor 2 5 1 in D minor. A good scale you could use over just that line would be the D harmonic minor scale. So A minor pentatonic is just A, C, D, E, G. A harmonic minor is A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp, A. D harmonic minor would be D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C sharp, D. Now over on my Patreon this month I have two solos for this song, a beginner's solo and an intermediate solo. Now the descending chord section where it goes D minor, D minor slash C, A minor, A minor slash G can give people trouble with like sort of reaching and finding those, those chords. So just a simple suggestion here. Don't play D minor slash C, don't play A minor slash G, just play D minor and then play A minor. The bass player will take care of those descending notes. So that would give you, instead of... You'd have this. You just play A minor seven there. I think it's possible if you need to do that. So the problem point of getting lost in this song this song, because it's A, B form, and because the B section isn't radically different to the A, I think it's easy to get lost in. And there's lots of A minor, B, E. Loads of that happening at the start and the end of the form, between the end of the A section and start of the B section. And I think it would be very common for someone to move too early to somewhere, or maybe too late. So how do you go about making sure you don't do that? Obviously you could glue your eyes to the chart but that's not going to be great in the long run. The best thing you can do in my experience in this problem is to link the melody to the chords. So if you were playing with someone, even if they're soloing, you might have to turn yourself off to them and just imagine or hum the melody in your, in your mind, if you like, as you practice it, as you play those chords. Obviously, if you're on your own, you could just sing or hum the melody as you play, but think of the melody as it's linked to the chords and then you shouldn't get lost. You shouldn't go to anything too early. This da 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 and so on. Just you know, that's some stellar scene there. Um, <laughs> not uh, just you can hum, sing, whatever, whatever works. But use that to try and keep track of where the melody is. You know, when when you're playing the chords. So thank you for watching this far, it is much appreciated. If you'd like to support the channel, then there's the option to leave a donation when you download the resources from today's lesson. Or if you'd like to learn more about this song and other jazz standards, then please do check my Patreon page each month for a standard and for this one. There's a chord melody, backing track, there's a comping study, chord tone outline, and a beginner's and intermediate solo, depending on what tier you sign up to. If you've got any questions, please do leave them below. Please hit that like button, leave me a comment. As I said, I'll do my best to answer any questions. But until next time, you take care.